This is Angelus McNally from Woodenville High School with a lab research project entitled Barking Up the Right Tree, the effects of magnolia bark extract on E. coli growth. The purpose of this project is to delve into one specific aspect of Eastern medicine, magnolia bark extract, which has been used thousands of years for many different purposes, most notably for a treatment of anxiety. During my preliminary research, I found many different studies testing the effects of the extract on cancer, periodontal bacteria, and other different ailments. However, I decided to take a more basic approach and see what the effect of the extract would be on E. coli. My hypothesis was that if the concentration of the extract on a growth of E. coli was increased, then the growth of E. coli would decrease. In order to test this hypothesis, I used two methods for adding magnolia bark extract to E. coli. One method added the extract at the same time that the E. coli was plated, while the second method added the extract two days after the E. coli had been plated and had some time to grow. In the results of this experiment, I found that magnolia bark extract did seem to inhibit growth in E. coli. However, this growth inhibition did not scale by the concentration of extract added. The materials used are as follows, plastic petri dishes, LB auger, a microwave to mix that auger and plastic wrap to assist with it as well, magnolia bark extract, E. coli with resistance to ampicillin, a micropipette with a large capacity, uh, tips to use for that micropipette, Erlen Meyer flasks, graduated cylinders and weigh boats, a scale with accuracy to 0.01 grams, inoculating loops, and a magnetic stir. The basic procedure is to make the LB broth, pour the plates, suspend the magnolia bark extract in water, cultivate bacteria, then follow the steps for method A or method B for adding the extract, then waiting for bacterial growth. As for results, I found growth on every plate mostly lawn-like growth of lots of bacteria, not individual colonies. In method A, there was less growth on low concentration plates, while in method B, there was similar growth on all plates, but no additional growth after the addition of extract. This result implies that growth was inhibited by the extract, but bacteria itself was not essentially killed. As follows are pictures of comparisons between plates on method B. Each photo was taken two days apart, in sequence. In conclusion, my hypothesis is partially correct and partially incorrect. It is true that growth was decreased as no new growth occurred after the extract was added. However, growth was not necessarily inhibited in both methods. De growth was definitely inhibited in method B as no additional growth occurred. However, growth still occurred in method A despite the addition of the extract. However, growth did not scale by concentration either which calls into question the accuracy of the results. Further studies may develop more accurate and fail-proof methods for addition of extract, perhaps by integrating the extract directly into the plate's broth without denaturing the extract's compounds. Furthermore, different types of bacteria could be used um, to develop an idea of how the magnolia bark extract impacts bacteria.